um, one of the things that our community, you know, uh, that I belong to is, is very keen on promoting uh, a vegan lifestyle, a vegetarian lifestyle as a way to transform consciousness and, and to move into uh, away from this, the industry that creates a lot of the problems that we have now. And the film seemed to have not touched on that. And I wonder why. Or, or was this one of those questions that was so, that is so difficult to, or one of those choices that is so difficult to make that we don't want to make it? Well, I mean, I personally, as a filmmaker, I don't eat meat, you know, and I think you have a very valid point. And I think there's a lot of issues and a lot of people we interviewed, we actually interviewed some people that actually talked about meat consumption and all that. Uh, but we can't cover everything, right? And in the making of a narrative, you know, people like Stan Groff and Roth Metzner that are amazing people were left out. So, you know, we do acknowledge that as something that is, you know, a serious issue. I think there's people like Michael Pollan that have addressed you know, our, our diets and, 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 you know, there's films out there that, I mean, I mean, you know, cer food certainly, ink. Cer certainly reducing meat consumption would be a great thing. I mean, yeah. even if people can't cut it out entirely, it's clearly a, a heavy burden on the planet on every level. I think we all agree with that here. Um, I, I, I think I find it difficult to be proscriptive about people's lifestyle choices, but I, I definitely think, I mean, we did talk about, you know, the soybean, you know, the kind of the, the, the Amazon is in there a lot, and obviously one of the big contributing factors to Amazon going away is, you know, growing more soybeans for cattle. Uh, so, you know, it's in there peripherally. But we, as, as Gerard said, we couldn't cover everything. I would have liked to have covered the crop circles and, um, you know, relationships between men and women. I, I, I definitely didn't want to do that. So, uh. <laughs> so you know, we've got issues for more films coming up. You know. <laughs> Who's got a question? Um, um, yeah, Mitch over here. And then move back so we get some people in the back after that. I just, first of all, thank you all for this fabulous film. I think it's a great, great. contribution. Uh, yes. Uh, the question is, knowing that there is a huge confluence of activity going on uh, relative to the destruction of our environment, from an environmental point of view, I'm wondering, I'd love to hear what all of you have to say, but especially Paul, is there some sense of prioritization of activity that we on a group level, on a collective level, could engage in to begin to deal with. Of course, BP stands out first and foremost these days, but from an overall global point of view, do you have some sense of some hierarchy, if you will, of what we can do to approach to deal with it in a systemic, systematic kind of way? Well, I, I'm obviously microcentric, so I'm going to speak to my <laughs> micro, microcentrism, sure. I guess it's called. Okay. Um, yeah, as one clear example, um, at the University of Washington, the Department of Astrobiology is better funded than the Department of Mycology. Now, I like the concept of astrobiology. I personally believe there are, are organisms in outer space, but we haven't found any yet, have we? And there's more than uh, two million species of fungi on this planet, of which we've only identified less than 8%. And so we are backwards. And so what I'd like to see is, is a radical change and removing mycophobia. Some people go, oh, I don't like fungi. Every vegetable you eat, every tree has a consortium of fungi within it. You are consuming it constantly. We are more closely related to fungi than we are to any other kingdom. There's a new super kingdom called the Pisthacanta that, that was erected about three years ago because they, it shows that we have a more common ancestry with fungi than we do with any other kingdom. How is it that we don't know the basic understanding of how soil is created? And yet we are we're creating these toxins that are destroying the very fabric of the, of the food web. So I would, I would answer that by saying that we need to have an emphasis on biology in general within the school systems and to teach children because they, you know, we are passing. Most of us are not going to be here in 50 years, you know, and um, the amount, the, again, the threshold of mass of effort that we need to achieve in order to do a course correction to prevent the human species from becoming extinct and taking down a lot of other species with it, you know, is, a, is, is we are insufficient right now in the biological tools that we have. And so I would like to have a reprioritization. Re re and a lot of us being an environmentalist, you know, we were basically, our voices were, you know, we were called alarmists. How, how many pe people now will call us alarmists about oil spills? You know, I don't think very many people would dare say that. And I think a lot of people who were conservative 
you know, including my mother, who's a neocon Fox News watcher, you know, all the way Rush Limbaugh, you know, she is, she is really concerned uh, about the state of the environment. And in the Bible, it talks about the importance of taking care of the ecosystem. In the Quran, it does. And I think all these world religions, no matter what your point of view, and the emphasis on psychedelics could have offended a few people here. But I think we all are unified in the concept that, you know, we are the reflection of the environment that gives us uh, our food and our birth. Everyone in New York City here, I mean, for the most part, all the food is imported. What happens when the ecosystem is destroyed and the food web is destroyed and you, you won't be able to get the food that you need within the cities? We have, a, we have a, a massive population shift and likely the Gulf Coast will be depopulated because if you were a Gulf spill worker and you went down there for six months to find out that you would lose 20 years off your life, is BP going to compensate you for losing two decades off your life? No. They're going to they're gonna hide now. And what I predict what BP is going to do is they're going to try to shirk their responsibility, hide behind lawyers, and basically take the money and run because this is a calamity that they cannot solve. So my answer to you is that we, we may not have enough time, but what we should do is invest in education and elevate biology and the biological sciences to their rightful place. That's my answer.